Jamie Knoll from the Convention and Visitors Bureau, our director. A number of folks from the Chamber office, I would just again want to just, the partnership we've got with the Chamber of the Two Virginias here in Mercer County is incredible. The, the way that they have come together to unify uh, our county for growth and for business interests, prosperity. I ask everyone here from the Chamber to please stand if you will at this time. And then also uh, our, our Chamber President, who's uh, Helped immensely. In just a moment, I'm going to call on him to uh, actually introduce the governor, Mr. Josh Klein. Would you please stand? Yeah. Yeah. Trying to think. Uh, I believe that covers most of the folks in attendance that have uh, that are supporters of this. Um, one other thing. We have one other person that I need to bring up that is absolutely essential to this project. We've got a a person who's been a, a business owner, an entrepreneur that has uh, located a business into our industrial park for years, has grown his business, was kind of at a point of, uh, you know, could he stay or not, based on the, the problems with some of the broadband there. His needs to be able to transmit um, engineering, high density files, so many things that require a much better level of high speed internet. Uh, we went to him and told him we had to have a private sector partner to make this project work. Would he be willing to uh, commit to uh, retaining and expanding some jobs if we were able to get high-speed internet there? And would he be willing to kind of open up his books and to share some personal info to, to help make this happen? And he was not only willing, he was thrilled to do that. And So I want to recognize Mr. Tim Warden with Air Dynamics and Inger Globe. Tim, would you please stand? project would not have happened without Tim's support. So I think we've uh, recognized a lot of folks that had something to do with this. Uh, at this time, I just want to say that um, there's, there's a number of entities that were involved in this. This was a great win for our community, for our county, as a great example of what we can do together when people are willing to cooperate in a way that uh, really just tries to uh, move our county forward in terms of economic development. Infrastructure is critical for our county. And today we took a step forward. We're excited about that. At this time, I'm going to ask uh, our chamber president, Mr. <coughs> Josh Klein, if he will come forward and introduce our distinguished special guest today. Uh, it's always an honor when you have come to the town's governor. We can't tell you how much we appreciate you being here. We appreciate all that you've done in West Virginia. Hopefully, we want to show you and the administration the great things happening here in this area. Uh, you've got a great group of people in the room, and as John said, it's a great teamwork atmosphere that's really evolved in Mercer County. Uh, West Virginia's best days are always ahead of it. I think we all agree with you in that remark. Uh, so instead of hearing me say anything else, I'd like to introduce and uh, if we could all give one more round of applause to our 36 Governor, Governor Jim Justice. This stool's really, really sturdy. It's slipping around a little bit. Uh, let me tell you this. First of all, I apologize for being a few minutes late. You know, uh, Steve Sarver has been a lifelong friend, and he met me out at uh, the interstate. Of course, I'm driving, state police behind me. He was supposed to meet me out at Starbucks, and of course, he was late. And then he finally got there, and then he brought me here, of which he knew exactly where to go. And after we made like the eighth pass around out there, and our guy was standing out here, finally the state police pulled up beside me and said, Jordan is standing in front of the building over there, and we were about to go in a building somewhere over there. But nevertheless, we made it, and I'm sorry that we're late. But you've got a lot of really distinguished people here. And I appreciate you all coming out. I mean, really and truly, when it boils right down to it, you know, what are we really here for? And what are we doing? You know, what we want to do is every day do all we can possibly do, all we can possibly do, to bring more people to West Virginia, to, to let, let people see what an incredible secret and incredible joy that we have here within this state. 
Now just think about it. You know, Josh was kind, Coach was kind, and I call Coach O'Neill kind because a long time ago I coached against him. Most every time I coached against him, it wasn't kind, you know. <laughs> but, uh, but nevertheless, uh, oh, I'm ringing, and, and I'm, I'm speaking of broadband, and look how high tech I am. I've got a flip phone, and it's my wife, so Jordan, come and get this. <laughs> Good. Okay, good hands, Jordan. <laughs> okay. Let me tell you this, though, before I go any further. I just said just a second ago that what we want in this state is to do goodness. I mean, you, you, I mean, you know, you could criticize me till the cows come home about stuff if you choose to do so. But the one thing you're not going to win in the criticism about is just this, is why am I here? Why am I your governor? You know, well, I'm your governor simply for one thing. I don't, I've never wanted a thing. I don't want a thing. I just want goodness for West Virginia. Now, in that, there's all kinds of aspects. You know, whether it be improving our education systems, you know, it, 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 whether it be, you know, rewarding the people that have worked really hard and felt like they were unappreciated and give them pay raises and those kind of things, whether it be do the stuff for the veterans or our roads or it just goes on and on. One giant component is bringing broadband and connectivity, high speed connectivity. Now I don't portray to be an expert on broadband by, because I'll be lost as a ball in high weeds. You know, I've known so many of you for so long, you know, I've known Tim and Roger and just goes on and on and on. You know, we're blessed to have our Senator here just, uh, a man that's really committed to the area and committed to West Virginia beyond belief and has been that way forever. Now, with all that being said, the things that I just mentioned to you, I mentioned education, I mentioned our veterans, I mentioned our roads. Here's a real component that is missing. We can't show ourselves off because we need broadband. We need the ability to be able to touch the world. And so I've got a grant here that, you know, not all the money in the world, but it's a pretty dadgum good lick. It's $155,000. You know, we're going to absolutely upgrade the park, and there's going to be more goodness happen within our, within our county and Mercer County and within our state. But let me tell you this just one, th one second. It's a little off the subject. I was in an office just a few hours ago, <coughs> less than a few hours ago, two hours ago. And I was sitting there with a guy that is one of our attorneys and everything and a friend. Not that this has anything to do with me, but, you know, he was just sitting there and we were just talking and just talking about shooting a bull. And just all of a sudden, just out of nowhere, his phone rings. His wife's on the phone and she's hysterical. His 23-year-old son is dead. Now, of course, he just breaks all to pieces. His 23-year-old son is overdosed on drugs, and they found him dead. He just graduated from a beautiful major university, and this, in all of his just tears, he said, my beautiful son, my beautiful son, he turned to me and he said he had a measured IQ of 166. Now I'm telling you, that's, that's genius beyond genius beyond genius. He's dead. This drug thing's got to stop. I don't profess to have all the answers. I know it's going to take a bunch of money. We came up with an idea on Jim's dream and it's a start. We've got to stop it. It's absolutely cannibalizing us all. You know, for those, uh, those of us that are doing a little better, we, we, at times you think, well, that's not happening to us. But it's touching every family, every race, union, non-union, it doesn't matter, Democrat, Republican, it's getting us all. 
and we've got to do something about it. And I am committed beyond belief to trying to do everything I can possibly do in my power to stop it. But I got to have all y'all. I got to have everybody all the time because at the end of the day, we got to make every single effort we can possibly make in every way to stop this. And we've made great progress and we're absolutely, you know, I'm really proud, you know, that we, we called everybody in and said, we got to get after these roads. We got to get after our secondary roads for crying out loud. You know, this business of doing a great big projects is great. We want to do them and it's putting people to work and it's, it's all working. And the numbers are coming in black instead of the numbers coming in red, red, red. You know, I go back to this and all I can do is just tell you the truth. I mean, when I walked in the door for God's sakes of living, I mean, anyway, you cut it. We were dead as, as DOA, as bankrupt could be. Now we've changed the numbers and we're fixing the roads and we're trying to make really, really in, in ways as far as education our veterans. But I'm gonna tell you this, we gotta stop this drug stuff. We got to. My good Lord of living is just eating us alive. So I'd ask you, you know, in your own way to say a little prayer for a, a family that's really, really, really hurting right now. It's tragic. It's just sad. The last thing he did when I left was he just, he hit his phone and said, look at my son. You know, and there he stood, you know, just in a golf shirt, clean cut as he could be. You'd never, ever in a billion years think, you know, had a job at a big time bank. You know, you'd never think in a million years it could be possible. Terrible, beyond belief terrible. So, I don't mean to clutter things maybe with that, but, uh, but it is really, really sad, really sad. So I'm gonna to read to you just a little bit to get my mind away from that if I possibly can, but uh, this grant today is $155,000 to the Mercer County Commission, and they're gonna use the funding to improve connectivity at Cumberland Industrial Park. Oh, I can't get this off, off my mind, but uh, it's, at the end, well, I'm not gonna read. Crying out loud, I'm not even good at reading, you know. The bottom line is just this. We do have a celebration today in Mercer County. It's not all the, wor all the money in the world, but it's another lick that'll make us better. And I couldn't be more happier than to be able to be here and have someone that has a pair of glasses or can read, to not read my notes, but to read this wonderful grant. And, uh, and I, I, I tell you this too, you know, in many ways, we've got our, a lot of our coal miners back to work, and there's a lot of things that are happening in West Virginia. There's a lot of things happening right here in Mercer County. You have an incredibly beautiful county, and I have the great ability and, and, and everything to have been able to have been through here my whole life. You know, uh, I've said it over and over, but, uh, you know, I, I give my entire life and all the blessings and all everything to the good Lord because I, I thank him first and foremost for everything and in my family and in, and in employees and in kids and that's, the, that's, the, that's what I run all the time, same thing. You know, good Lord, family, employees, kids, over and over and over and that's what I do. Just, it's a circle that I'm in on all the time and I try to do what I can do to help wherever I can help. But I can tell you this, that little black stuff in the ground that absolutely all of us are connected to one way or another, I owe a great deal of my life, if not all my life, in, in some way or another to coal because it just means that much to all of us and has meant that much, and one coal mine job means everything to us. And so I, I celebrate the fact that we're doing better. You know, I, I will leave you on coal in just this statement in, at one time in the state of West Virginia, we mined 181 million tons of coal. And today, today in West Virginia, we're running at a run rate of about 100. You know, when I walked in the door, we were running at a run rate of, you know, 72, 75. So we've really increased. But if you'll think, at one time we ran 181 million tons. So we still got a real upside and everything. And uh, I'm not a believer that coal's over. I'm not a believer that coal's dead. 
I am absolutely a believer in, whole, in, in every way, shape, form, or fashion that our metallurgical coals will be here for until the cows come home, and it's going to take a long time for us to walk away from coal heating and air conditioning our homes and keeping the lights on. So, so anyway, I've been all over the gambit. You know, it's a great day, a great day for Mercer County and a great day for the state of West Virginia. And John, Coach, if you'll come up and read, because I can't see it. I'll, I can only see pieces of it. I will read this, and I'm going to ask our commissioners if they would come forward and get on each side of you and receive the uh, Yeah, please do. Here. All right, Community Development Block Grant certified that a grant of $155,000 has been awarded to the Mercer County Commission for the Cumberland Industrial Park Broadband Expansion Project. Jim Justice, go. You want to hand that to him there? I sure do. There you go, guys. Thank you all. God bless you. Thank you, Thank you, John. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, Frank. All right, unless we got something else to talk about, we're done. <laughs>